So thank you for coming to the web printing solutions uh, presentation. Uh, there's many ways to skin this cat, so we're going to go over a few of those and see what we can get through in the hour. So one of the things we want to figure out is, you know, there's a lot of ways to figure to do web printing. Unfortunately, there's no simple way to uh, accomplish all the ways, all the different combinations of browsers and platforms and printers. So we want to go through and um, show you different ways in which you can enable web printing into your applications. And I guess I went a little bit quick and skipped the introductions. Um, I'm Brett Anno. Uh, I manage the software development for the printer side of the business. And we have Manuel, who is a lead for the ISV team and will be a lot of your uh, direct contacts for this sort of um, <clears throat> need. So what we plan on going over here is to familiarize you guys with what we can do, um, figure out how to best take advantage of getting the settings from the printer, let you have a more complete printing solution with Bidai Printing, um, look at our solutions for integrating printing into the back end, or putting printing into the, the uh, front end uh, with browser print. So if we think about how development has changed over years, how many of you guys are developing um, strictly for client type applications? Okay, and how many are strictly doing web-based applications? Okay, and then how many are doing both? And so you'll see that, you know, as things progress, you can't really lock into any one type of solution. As you have different customer needs, you're going to have to adapt to what the, uh, the customer wants. So if you look at <clears throat> printing from web-based applications, you know, why can't we just print? Um, there is really no easy button and there's a lot of locks in the web-based printing. So if you look at <clears throat> printing and you look at some of the traditional ways of using drivers for printing, drivers are limited. Um, there's not really built-in support in the mobile OSs for drivers. And on the PC, there's limited by die support. And <clears throat> When it comes to trying to use the browser, there, what I would recommend is visit our vendors that are out there that have um, driver-based solutions. And so if you're using Windows um, as your main platform and you need to integrate web-based printing in that space, visit um, Bartender and Nice Label, see what they have as far as um, solutions for that space. They do have some solutions for printing from the cloud and they can help you there. Um, but we'll go over some other methodologies for if you need, oops, I went backwards. We'll go over some other technologies for some of the solutions that we have as well. So when it comes to printing directly from the browsers, there's problems on the browser side because as security models change, the browsers limit access to hardware. So we'll talk about some of the things to get around that as well. So looking at the way of doing printing, um, there's really two main models that we'll talk about. The first model is directly connecting your printer to your backend server. So um, have you guys heard of Cloud Connect before from the other presentations? Um, Cloud Connect with the printer, um, LinkOS firmware, will allow you to connect the printer directly to your backend server so that no matter what clients you're using, whether you're using a, a mobile computer, a PC, um, you can serve up the web pages there and you know, interact with your backend application server and have the application server itself control the printing. So you don't have to worry about how do you route it through the device. Uh, I need to fix my mouse, sorry about that. The other methodology is for Bluetooth enabled printers you can have, and you can even connect via um, network as well, but you can have the mobile computer be kind of your transport to the printer from the application server. And so you have a few advantages here. So 
if you're connecting the printer directly to the server, the advantage is that it's the connections there. The disadvantage is you still have to come up with a methodology to tell the server which handheld computer is connected to which printer. So you have to have some sort of pairing event to do that. On the mobile side, the advantage is you have the bump and pair technology that we have, or tap and pair, and <clears throat> you have a few solutions for um, doing this sort of connection, whether you're using the enterprise browser, um, using MobiPrint, or a few other solutions that are out there. So this is constantly changing. Look at the approved vendors from the ISV team in order to see what's out there and um, what applications exist. So the methodologies we'll look at is we'll look at the Zebra Enterprise Browser, we'll look at the URL schema, um, talk about connecting via the backend server either directly via TCP or using Cloud Connect, and finally we'll go over the front end application with Browser Print. So most of the browsers out there work by um, isolating the components because of the security um, concerns of letting browsers access your scanner, access your keyboard, access anything. Um, one of the things that you know the Zebra Enterprise browser does is essentially it's made for mobile computers. It's made to give you access to those things that you know a normal browser would not give you access to. So with this, you can integrate scanner camera. Um, and now the printer is also supported via the SDK, and you can access that through the enterprise browser. So rather than go over that in this session, there is another session devoted to the enterprise browser. So I recommend um, if you guys need a browser-based solution and you can use the Zebra enterprise browser, that's definitely an option, and you'll get to printing via that. Uh, your programming will need to be in JavaScript. Uh, so you're gonna essentially develop the code in JavaScript to pass down to the enterprise browser. The enterprise browser will take care of getting your printing code to the printer via um, <clears throat> a direct connection using the SDK. So in Android and iOS, um, you can use URLs and redirect URLs to other applications. So <clears throat> inside your application, you can call out a URL. If your application that handles printing has registered for that alternate URL, you can redirect information to an alternate application. Uh, so you can either look for a partner app to do this, or if you would like to go this route, you can use the SDK to generate your own app and in Android, register via the manifest system or in iOS, um, register for the URL so that when your website needs to print, redirect to that URL and then let the on-device um, application handle that. That has difficulties <coughs> in that the customer does need to go and download or install another app onto their system. So there can be some confusion in some of the initial kickoff but once they're configured, that's another option for meeting that need. Okay. So <clears throat> with the legacy printers and the LinkOS printers, you can support a TCP direct connection from your backend server. Essentially, you embed the SDK into your server. The server needs to be an on-premise based server and you can connect all the printers in the four wall from that web application server. So essentially it's just a matter of making a TCP connection to a printer that's on the network. It's a pretty simple solution, but again, you have the limited scope. So as long as you're within the four walls, it's a perfectly fine solution. Um, you do have to find a way of linking the mobile computer to the printer so that you're not sending a print job to the wrong location. Um, and there's a few things built into LinkOS to ease that. So, <clears throat> uh, again, uh, one of the things that we've noticed, um, this was a hospital situation 
to where having Wi-Fi based printers and mobile computers, the person would use it, pair them, they would be printing fine and they would leave the printer down, but then a new, different nurse would come and take a different mobile computer they were already using, grab the same printer, but while they were going to the next patient, a nurse at the, with the previous computer hit print without connecting it to a different printer, and that would trigger the mobile computer to print out the um, label from the wrong nurse. So with um, different technologies inside the printer, there's a, um, a different TCP port you can use, and that TCP port, when you connect to it, will disconnect any previous connections. So when it comes to developing your solution, um, the printer has a lot of capabilities, and what I've noticed from the previous session is that there's not a lot of um, knowledge about all the things that the printer can do, so look take a look at some of the things that are in the ZPL manual. It's a huge manual. Um, or talk to your ISV team and see what can be done for your specific solution. So kind of like talk through your solution with the ISV team and we can help you with um, determining the best solution for your needs. Okay, so Cloud Connect. This is the uh, solution that I'll be doing a demo on, browser print will be handled by Manuel. So Cloud Connect works very similar to a TCP direct connection to your printer, except that the printer is actually connecting to the server. And the reason that the printer connects to the server is so that the printer can navigate through firewalls. So if you're starting to have a distributed network of printers across multiple facilities, or you have a mobile workforce that uh, is outside your four walls. You can use Cloud Connect to connect back into a centralized server, whether that server is in the cloud or the servers um, within your four walls, but you have some sort of uh, DMZ or some way of connecting from the outside world directly into that server. The, by using the WebSockets protocol, it's, <coughs> is that, who's familiar with WebSockets? Okay, so essentially, Everybody's network is set up to use web traffic, right? So all the routers are configured to handle HTTP. Essentially, WebSockets is just a TCP layer on top of HTTP. So it gives you bi-directional communications, but as far as all the routers are concerned, it looks like web traffic. And so it gets handled and it does give you bi-directional and immediate communications to the printer. We've seen some solutions in the past which have been essentially polling solutions where you set up the printer to do a web request up to a cloud-based server and say, hey, do you have any information for me and send it back in the back channel. But the polling is, you know, you have to finally tune that so you can do that like every 30 seconds, but who wants to wait 30 seconds for a print job to come back to the printer? So with the printer connected in via WebSock, it's an, it's an immediate response. So the connection stays active and you can communicate to it immediately. So it doesn't matter if your printers are in the four walls, outside the four walls. <coughs> doesn't matter if your server's inside the four walls or in the cloud. Um, the Cloud Connect gives you the flexibility to make that uh, connection to the printer. So how do you embed Cloud Connect into your application? So as part of the multi-platform SDK for LinkOS, uh, the we distribute the Zebra War file, essentially like a jar file, but for your cloud. Um, and you embed the SDK inside your server, and <clears throat> it's really similar as far as its function calls to using the SDK directly. And <clears throat> you essentially make the printer connection, and you know you can use the graphics conversions, the template printing, the statusing that's built into the SDK, just like if you're writing a mobile application. So to give you a little bit of just behind the scenes as far as how the WebSockets work is the printer will make an initial HTTPS request to the server and the server will respond and then the printer will then make a request to upgrade that to a WebSocket. It's a pretty straightforward um, sequence in which 
connects, it responds, and gets upgraded. And like I said, the firewall it uses the same rules as HTTPS. And the other advantage is that this is one of the methods in which you can do secure communications to the printer as well. Because it is HTTPS, it does use TLS um, to encrypt the communications. Um, there's some other things that you could potentially do with this technology as well. If you think about creating a secure environment for printers at your customer site, I know a lot of businesses aren't in the habit of creating VLANs and like isolating different devices, but if you're in the retail space and you need, you, you've heard about some of the hacks that have occurred and some of the security concerns about edge devices, you can always take your printers and put them into their VLAN and not allow any incoming connections to that VLAN, and you just set up a single rule that says, okay, have these printers connect up to the server, and you can handle printing with the printers in a very isolated form. So, <clears throat> in using the, what we'll go over in the code, is essentially, you'll still call discover routine. The discover routine is just a routine that tells you what printers are currently connected to the server. You'll set, call similar functions as you call in the SDK today to make the connection to the printer, and then you'll interact in the same fashions as the SDK, like I was saying. So the discovery functions that are in there are similar to what's there, but here you're going to use the remote discoverer, and you're going to ask for the connected printers. Then once you have printers, you're going to request a remote connection to one of the printers that um, you selected, and then you use the printer factory to get the printer that you'll interact with. Once you have this Zebra printer, that's the same class that you're using if you're using Bluetooth, if you're using TCP, and you can use all the same functions with that object. So the example that comes in the SDK is a very simple print the configuration label. And then what we'll do is we'll show you the code here uh, to get the settings and to print the format. So it's not a crazy amount of code, but I'm not a good programmer on the fly. So we'll go through and um, look at the code that's already created and running. OK. So we created this on the Linux VM. If you guys are interested in the enhanced demo, let me know. We'll get you a link to box where you guys can download the VM and see it in a working environment with the extremely secure password password. So any questions so far while waiting for this to boot up? Yeah. Can you go again and explain the again? Um, once the um, connection is done between the printer and the server, the server can print directly to the printer, is that right? To right. The socket. So there's no polling from the printer to the server. No, there's no, once it... time it can start the print. Right. And so once it makes the connection, there are um, occasional like ping packets back and forth to keep the connection active. So there's some... A lot of times, firewalls will see an inactive connection and kill it. And so it's, there's a configurable setting in the printer to determine how often. And you can also configure some stuff on the server side as well um, okay. to handle that. But yeah, it's, it's, it's like a TCP connection is always on. Once you've made that connection, it's just there and ready to go either direction. OK. So just the first time, uh, the printer needs it to reach out to the server. Yeah. And that's the job is done. Okay, thank you. A couple of the other um, interesting uh, features that you can use this for is if you Bluetooth connect a scanner to the printer, you can use this transport. There's a capture methodology built into the, um, <coughs> the printer's LinkOS firmware. And that capture methodology will let you capture the Bluetooth port and capture any scans and then send it up to the server as an alert. Um, likewise, a lot of that, that the functionality in LinkOS is, is modular, 
where you can do it as a alert through the Cloud Connect. But if you have a different type of application, you can make it an HTTPS alert or a TCP alert for on-premise applications. Um, so essentially, we have a bunch of different options. The other thing you can do is you can take over the display. And so you can have the server send down um, commands to load specific WML pages depending on what you need the user to do. So if there's some sort of prompting you need to send for them to do something, you can send that sort of messaging down as well. Okay, so now we need... Connecting shortly. So the base zebra.war will give a response and then they'll let you know um, which printers have connected. Let me make sure this didn't switch networks on me. Yeah, it did. So I'll give the VM a little bit to get caught up and then the printer should connect into the VM when it's running. So <clears throat> yeah, developing for the cloud could be fun, right? So I talked about the fact that you can redirect the uh, Bluetooth communications through, you can take over the front panel. Another um, interesting thing you can do is let's say you do have a legacy um, server-based application that you're using to print, but you want to change the functionality. Uh, you can capture the print job that comes over the serial parallel um, USB ports. You can send it up to your server, and then you can let your server do essentially real-time updates to the um, printing application. So there's some applications, let's say you have a cash register application that's using you know, old fashioned like O post type printing and it's very blockish and um, there's not a lot of value add. You can essentially capture that, send it up to the cloud and you could potentially um, add advertisements to it. You can switch it over to uh, true type fonts. You can do a few different things like that by sending it up and getting real time information or you can even add like customer loyalty stuff into it as well. Has it stabilized yet? <coughs> no. <coughs> yeah. Um, in the retail environment, we, uh, let's say we have a client with uh, many printers, but some of them are not zipper. We can use this exactly the same uh, for all the printers, or it's only for zipper. No. Only so, for a zebra link so OS. So we need to recognize which ones are zebra and do uh, different. Uh... Right, because the other printers won't connect to your backend server okay. um, unless they have some other methodology. Um, but okay, we're about we're just about there. Okay, so printers connected. So once the server came online and was out there, the printer found it, connected to it, and so this is the base page that the Zebra War has, it just tells you what's connected. So if you go into the developer demo that we created for this, we have a base page and the base developer demo comes with this print config. So you hit the print config button and should the, uh, the demo gods are happy. I have a label coming out from the print config. So that's what comes with the developer demo. What we've expanded here is we added the ability to get settings and the print to format. Um, to optimize on time, I'll skip the getting settings, but you might be surprised to know, but there's about 700 to 1,000 configurable, well, status and configuration items that you can receive back from the printer. And the SDK has functions to help you get to those. Uh, <clears throat> 
If we look at the print format, so this is the JSP, which is just the page for when you do the get request for the print format button. And we're going to ask for their first name, last name, and then give a post um, endpoint for it to actually send the print request to, which is here. So Zebra Web Services demo, print format, you're going to pass in the serial number, first name, last name. So if you were to want to add an ID to this, you just add another ID um, input field, you'd pass the information to that endpoint, and then you can pass more information in. So with everything that we do with the SDK, we tend to lean towards template-based printing rather than give you all the functions to say create font here, create barcode here, because if you didn't want to learn ZPL to do the printing, learning how to do it in an SDK um, doesn't match. So if you guys are disagreeing with that and you definitely want that, let the ISV team know so they'll work with us and we can create those add-ons to the SDK. It's not a big deal. Um, but we have very good partners and nice label bartender that can create formats in a GUI for you. So use those sort of applications, use Zebra Designer, generate the ZPL, put the format in there, and then use the SDK to help you fill the template in so that you're just working with the actual variable data. So on the Java side, um, to handle the post request, uh, we have this side, which is a do post, um, you're passing in a serial number. So we <clears throat> get the remote connection. We use the Zebra printer factory um, in order to get the printer that we're, um, have the serial number. So once we have the printer, we use the functions built into the SDK. So essentially build the Java map put the variables into the map, and then we use the print stored format function in the SDK to take that variable data and merge it with the label template that's up here. So you can keep your templates in a file. In this case, for the demo, for simplicity's sake, we put it into a string. Um, the other option is to just have the templates on the printer so you're not sending the templates down every time. Um, so like I say with everything else, we put a lot of flexibility in there so you guys can design your solution depending on your needs. So down here it prints, and make sure you have it all in try-catch so you can account for errors like the network disconnecting on you. Okay, so here, print format. This is the get request, and then we put in of course, hello world. That does the post to the server, and then you can have your printing. And like I said, use the design application so that you print out something fancier than what I did there. Okay? So I will hand it over to Manuel now, and he'll go over browser print. But before I do that, any other questions on Cloud Connect? Cool. And I'll be around afterwards for other questions. You want to set up the sample, you can download the multi-platform SDK and then it's a folder say web services and the sample comes there. So you can put the sample on your site if you want to do it. You want additional support for that, you can just uh, email us. Uh, we can get you with that. And yes, question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the first question is <coughs> you talk about uh, the socket, but uh, some servers and some components uh, using cloud poly requests. Does it can use cloud poly requests in the server? That's what it's all So are you, are you asking if you can also do? Um, uh, it cost when the printer connects to the server. That's the website, yes? Right. Yeah, okay. And uh, the second uh, question is about SDK. Uh, can we use it? on a different platform, not Java, for example, from Python. So it's easy to write uh, WebSocket server on Python or some other. So the server is written and it's distributed as a war. So if you're doing Python with the Tomcat server, then you can do essentially the endpoint request mm -hmm. over to the um, SDK war file. So you can still do those requests and 
you may have to do some Java side mm -hmm. over there to implement some of the features. So you might expose a few items. So keep your Python and do a lot of your coding on the Python side, but implement just what you need over on the Java side in conjunction with the war file, and then use the like REST interface to pass the data across. So it's, um, you are not going to uh, make this platform not just Java or transform to some other to use uh, free without Java. Right. So write on, I don't know, Python SDK or some, some other language. Um, so that's what we're looking at is like what's the next step beyond Java and right now we're leaning towards um, doing a Docker component and so you can just pull the Docker component down into your application. Yeah. That will also help us with the scaling side. So with the Docker component there would be a REST interface so it doesn't matter what you're yeah, doing, yeah, you're programming well. <coughs> and we would expose more of the SDK via the REST interfaces. Technically speaking, the printer does comply with the RFC for WebSockets, so you could do it directly, but um, there's a lot of details of you know, security and that kind of thing as far as actually creating your own WebSocket endpoint to talk directly to the printer. Um, we have, we've only had a few people who actually really went through and did that. Um, most people have essentially what he was saying, use the Java just to implement the couple of features you need to create some endpoints for, from there, um, and then work with whatever language that you're normally working with. Mm -hmm. But we are following the RFC for web buckets, so you could potentially do all that work. So basically, uh, just coming back to the presentation, what we want to do, to, uh, what we wanted to, to show you today, guys, are the different options that we have worked with pr uh, printing solutions. For browser print, will be another session a little deeper later today with my colleague here, with uh, Robin West. I'm gonna go quick through basic uh, code example and she will la be later showing the demo on her session. So basically here, yes, I'm gonna go through the de uh, simple uh, portion of the browser print. You saw what we can do on the back end side but now we are looking to the front side of the web, so the front end solution. So browser print basically applies, as you see here, the graphic, where you're seeing that we are connecting the printers. You see this uh, difference here between the version that we showed with Cloud Connect before? What, what are you seeing here is, okay, your phone. So yeah, I'm gonna just go here one second just to show you what we did. We are trying just to solve. So you see here where we are connecting the printer, right? So we are connecting that to the bat server. We are solving the gap through the firewall. So we solved that gap doing the Cloud Connect. So we don't have the uh, now the problem with the firewall. Now what we are doing is solving the other part of the connectivity. So we are connecting through the server. Now we want to solve the other issue through the front end. Front end. And that is what we are doing with browser print. So we are connecting the printers directly to the devices. How we are connecting those printers to the devices? We are connecting those through USB, through network, and in the future, we are coming with Bluetooth uh, in a version in Android, and may, we will have another version in iOS, covering to all of the environments to have a full supported browser print front end solution. But what we are trying to get you guys are the tools to have connectivity in all of the environments, front end, back end. Now, let's go in detail through the use cases Basically, this is what I have it telling you before. One of the most important things that we did with browser print is enable the capability to have uh, bi-directional communication. 
you find some solutions on the market right now where only allows you to have unidirectional communication. Only you can send print jobs to the printer, but don't have the status checks capability or don't have the option to, cap, to capture all of the other information if you, for example, want to implement analytics or other functionality with link OS features. So those uh, are other options that you see on the market. In, a, uh, in addition, that only allows you to have unidirectional communication, only uh, allows you to install based on, um, 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 browsers. So that, uh, as for example, you need to just download a plugin for uh, Chrome. You need to download a plugin for uh, each uh, browser. That is another thing that we have uh, done differently with browser print. Browser print only allows you, we download the application on the device and that covers horizontally all of the browsers. Why or how we are doing that? Okay, we are accessing that application to JavaScript libraries. So we create some JavaScript libraries to allow you to do that. Another, another advantage of uh, browser print is allow you to connect legacy printers in addition to the link OS printers. With legacy printers, always you will have that limitation with the uh, basic, config or basic features that legacy printers allow you to use. LinkOS printers instead allows you to use all of the capabilities that LinkOS feature uh, as a remote device management, uh, cloud connect uh, connectivity. Another thing that I want to tell you today, if, if you have a solution that you want to implement, Cloud Connect doesn't enable to do browser print. So you can have both solutions at the same time. You can have Cloud Connect in a, a working on the back side of the printer, and you can have a browser print on the front side of the printer at the same time. So one doesn't block the other one. So basically, that's the, the, I just explained to you what is the problem that we are solving. Uh, the initial uh, release that we did was working only in USB configuration and USB connectivity. The second release that we did last uh, uh, January uh, includes networking uh, connectivity too. So you can connect the printers through USB and um, um, network. The version that we are developing in Android obviously will allow you to have uh, network configuration and Bluetooth connectivity. Questions so far? Okay, good. Just so you guys know, the Android one is essentially a beta right now. So if anyone wants to uh, sign up and, and get a test of the Android version, um, just let us know uh, from the IT team and we'll help set you up with that. So this, uh, we have cleared the message. Uh, in order to set up a uh, browser print, you need two things. One thing is you need to download the app on your machine. And the other thing is you have need to implement the uh, Java, uh, Java script libraries in your web app. With those two components, you can do many things with the printers. Yeah, so and additionally for you guys, we can provide, or we provide you when you download the, 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 the browser print application from the website in Zebra, you have access to the sample code, user guide, and the APIs that comes with. <coughs> It's very simple to make that work. As uh, Brett explained to you, we don't want you to make the things difficult for you. So basically, we want to do the things easy for you. So use the tools that are in the market now to build uh, um, labels, uh, all of the uh, options that you have. Even here, we have a code that is also developing labels too on the website. So even uh, a good example of how they implement Cloud Connect is a uh, code, a code implement uh, Cloud Connect in their, uh, on the con configuration. We have another uh, partner here, Seagull, who already working on, um, on with Android version through connectivity and using backend solutions too. So there's different partners that already are using our SDKs and solution, and that gives you an example of what you can do with that. And uh, the, the, the explanation here is very simple. You uh, use the tool for the label to build the template. You send that through the web browser you want it to the printer, and that's it. We'll print whatever you want to do with the printer. Okay, this is just basically how looks the client setup that you install on your computer. As you see, it's basically when you install the, the client setup, you will see a small zebra on your back, 
and that will show uh, three different options settings about an exit. About is basically the version that is actually running. Um, I recommend to you check that and keep that updated with the latest version that we have on the website. Um, here there are three different sections well, or two different sections basically on the top side will show you the web browser that you can set up and allow to connect, uh, sorry, the printer that allows you to connect. The application allows you to set up a default printer, always connected, so the first one is to set up the default printer. The second part is just to uh, accept or enable the web browser, uh, the web address that you want to connect and use with web uh, browser print. The bottom part comes with two uh, options, one to set up networking connectivity and the other one to connect, uh, connect by default USB. But if you want a network connectivity, you need to go to the setup and enable that option. Otherwise, only will allow you to connect USB. They have the option to say whether or not they want your website to be able to have access to their printers, and that's controlled through the, these settings here. They also can say, no, I don't want your website to talk to our printers. Obviously, make sure that they know that they, you do want them to say yes to that particular request, um, and it'll get added into that list. Um, they can clear that list as well, so if they do make a mistake and you select the wrong thing, they can put it back in there. Um, to allow your website to connect to their printers. But they have the option of that security um, of allowing and disallowing um, your website to connect to their printers. So basically, when uh, just continue the, uh, doing the portion of the JavaScript, we just review how is the client set up. Now we are going just to see a simple review of how it's working, uh, the uh, JavaScript libraries, and how we recommend to you guys to implement the uh, uh, workflow of uh, a simple uh, printing app. Basically, what is, uh, what is in there is the get default printer, and after that, uh, when you implement, so that comes by default on the sample code. When they get the default printer, you set up the default printer as explained to you with the, uh, with the window setup. And after that, you will get all of the other get all local printers. You select from there the, lo the printer you wanna use, you enter your data or you have your data pre, uh, pre safe on your web app, even if you're connecting databases, you are able to uh, pull that data into that point, but the idea is in this point is when you pull that data through the template or what you have pre-established to be printed. Before to send the print job to the printer, always as a best practices, that's part of what we recommend, is check the printer status. We don't want you send print jobs uh, to the printer uh, in a blind way. That is the most powerful part that you, we are doing, enable all of the capability with uh, uh, browser print and with the other solutions, is that you have bidirectional response from the printer. You can communicate with the printer and we encourage you to do that. Just no same print jobs in a blind way to the printer. So when you have the printer status okay, is when you send the data to the print and print. So this is basically the sample of the workflow, how we recommend to do that. And in here is basically the sample uh, uh, is, that is implemented in our sample code <coughs> to do those steps happen. So get the full printer, basically it's a simple loop where you get the printer, uh, there are two conditions, no null, and the printer is not undefined, and you get your local printer. If it's an error, uh, we'll go through error response and, and show the error. The next thing, as you see, we have been consistent with other things, even with Cloud Connect, is the printer discovery. Uh, so we go through the printer discovery, and we're trying to find all of the printers that are connected to that particular device. Be careful, but we, we are talking here to the front end, so we are talking about to the devices. So if we have four printers connecting through USB to that device, all of those printers will show up here. So you can send several print jobs to different local ports. That's a powerful of this uh, solution. Even you can interchange, that is not a common option, but you can interchange the USB ports and it still will be continued doing the job. Check status is a very, very simple check status. We are using our command in uh, CPL H -A Q E S function that collect all of the uh, information of the printer with the different status. What we are pulling here is only the more basic ones, paper out, ribbon out, media door open, and printer pause. 
So when that uh, uh, when that pull the data there will show in the with the uh, with the right message, and after that it doesn't show the error message it's that you are able to send the print job. Here is the uh, routine to the printer discovery. Uh, sorry, I'm going back. Sorry, I just say it doesn't make sense. Now the last portion of this is when you do print. So here is that bit of sample format that we are using to do the demo, and we are collecting just the the uh, uh, head for the um, for the label, and you put the data there, check the status, and send to print, and that's it. You don't get error, and you finish with the browser print solutions. Remember, what we are trying to show you here is into the spectrum of the wet size or the wet print, we are covering more of the uh, use cases. So part of the competitors are not covering all of those use cases. We are telling you with uh, Secure Today that if you work with Zebra <coughs> and web browser solutions, you have all of the tools to make your application a uh, success with your customers. So use our tools. You have any question, come to us, and we will help you to do the integration. Any question you have at this time? I recommend to go or later, you go in detail with browser print with my colleague. She will be explaining in detail how to use browser print. What time is your uh, presentation? Good question. Um, this afternoon. <laughs> okay, good. So go there. Recommend to you guys to go in detail. Uh, if you want to go and learn a little more about browser print, go there and check that. Question about guys? No? We're fine? Okay, rec I recommend to you guys visit the tables, uh, Seagull table. They have a very nice application to show you guys the uh, uh, version in iOS and uh, Android. Um, so go guys, use the tools that we have there and what other partners have been done. Okay? Thank you.